Hello and welcome back to the studio. If you're new here, my name is Leah. I'm a collage artist and this is the Flanzella headquarters. So today we're going to be making DIY birthday cards. Last week we were using strips of paper and this week we are using a circle hole punch. Geometry is in the air, I can feel it. I've been using a lot of different shapes and patterns and this is a really fun thing that you can do and I know that there's just so many ideas that can be riffed off of it. So what I start with are these envelopes. Because I do these for an actual thing as well, I have three different types of envelopes just so that they can match the different dot colors. Uh, I would recommend getting a couple different ones just in case. And then these are the actual papers. They are scored through the middle so that they will be easy to fold. And then it has this like indent in the front of the card. And then here's where the magic is. For years, I've used this punch hole, which has the bottom there, and you just put a piece of paper in and crunch it to cut out pieces that I really liked that I was going to throw out. So I have so many different colors and they're just super fun. So I was just gonna make one or two, but I do have a big art market coming up and these do sell really well. So I think I'm just gonna try to make as many as possible. What I do is I take this, you can see that this is the front, and I just push down on where it would be folded. And then I'm gonna put this under a book and then keep adding to it and then let them sit for a little bit. So these have been flattened and they look great. They're super flat now versus before where they're popping up. So from here we have all of these and we're going to use a glue stick and the card and I'm going to pick nine circles. With so many dots, it can be overwhelming to choose which ones go together, but often my rule of thumb is trying to find two that are alike, like for example, these two, and then trying to find some sort of complementary color that goes with them. So maybe this like mustardy olive color. And then I wanna find one that kind of combines that color and is a little bit more interesting to add some texture. So let's say this one. And then if we're feeling funky, maybe it's time to add a little bit more color. So I found this one. There's also this one and maybe something to also go with this that's just a little bit different. That one might work. And I'm also, oh, this one will definitely work instead. I like that. Um, and I'm trying to picture like a persona of who the person that would like these colors would be and try to find ones that would kind of go with like that kind of style. It is a lot of luck and chance though of as to what goes together, but I think that this is a really beautiful color combination to start with. You could even add that or another green or a brown maybe. And that's just a quick example of how you can make a color palette. Once I have all those picked out, I usually pick one of the colors that are darker or the brightest at the very top. I'm not really sure, I kinda, I kinda switch it up. And then I usually put like a textured colorful one there. Oops, this one got flipped over. And then one that kinda goes with both of those two here. And then I know that there's gonna be probably one like right in the front that's a little bit more interesting like that, but then also you wanna make sure that you're not gonna have two that are the exact same right next to each other. So I know that this one's gonna go there, this one will probably go here, and then this one there, maybe there, and then to add some contrast in the middle, that one will go there. And then I don't like to keep them the exact same for every single one, so I like to switch it up. So I think that this is kind of pretty. A balloon bundle is never gonna look the exact same. So I mean, there could be two at the top. I just like having one behind because that's kind of what ends up happening in a balloon bunch. And yeah, they kind of move around a lot. So when you're gluing, it'll be a little bit mixed up as well. But I think that's pretty cute. 
And then when I'm gluing, I just start at the very top one and I try to get this one centered and high enough up that the rest of them will be able to fit. So I'll start with that one. And then these two are gonna overlap slightly like that. And I try to do this quickly because I'm probably going to have to move them slightly once I put them down just to accommodate for the next layer. I don't like having space in here because that means that the bunch isn't full. And we're trying to make it look as full as possible. So something like that, probably. I've been asked a lot about how to glue smaller things to paper and <laughs> as you can probably see, I just use my fingers. I don't think it's a big deal to use your fingers. In fact, I think it's actually a great way to do this. So do whatever you like. And then I'm gonna stick this one last. So I have to kind of come up with, and also some of the edges are a little bit screwed up. So I try to hide those under the rest of it like that. And then from here, I'm going to draw two sides of a triangle to make the balloon strings that are coming down from it and that are attaching. I don't make it too long. And I try to reach out to the far side of the balloons. And then within this triangle, I'm going to put a couple of strands to make it look like the strands are all coming into one bunch. pretty cute. And then the final touches that I like to do is I just do a kind of a messy bow and make it look like there's multiple and then just do some little ribbons. Voila. And now let's make, I guess, 11 more of these. So when picking colors, I try to pick ones that have a couple that are kind of similar in tone and then have a couple that are very different. So I mean, this one is very bright and it has a pattern and this one's more subtle and it has a light pattern, light pattern, and then some solids. So I've played around with the shape and I like this shape for like a balloon um, like bunch, but I just really don't like this white one. I think it's a little bit too light for the side and the other pieces have these kind of jewel tones. So maybe something like this. When making a piece like this, we have to think of perspective basically. So the balloon behind is obviously like almost behind these ones, right? And then this is another layer on top. That's another layer. And then this one, and then these ones are almost like a behind layer of those ones. See, so cute. And I've also done a version of this where it's like ice cream. So you do like a little ice cream cone underneath. I think there's a lot of possibilities for this as to what it could be as a card. I try to make them all a little bit unique too. So this one's like getting blown away and I try to make them, yeah, just look like their own little unique piece. The beauty of this is that if you get bored, you can just start flipping them over. Every single one has two sides, two different designs on them. And sometimes I've cut out things for one side and then I end up really liking the other side. I feel like a lot of these are looking neutral, but then I'll flip them over and there will just be a completely really cool wacky design, which I'm probably, which is probably the reason I cut it out in the first place. I definitely like to have some neutrals to have in the mix, but yeah, a lot of these I did not expect to have like a different side. So that's kind of cool.
I hope you enjoyed watching making all of these pieces. If you make a ton, now you have a bulk of cards for the entire year. Or in my case, I'm ready for the next market coming up. Based on this idea, I would love to know if you have other ideas of how to use these circles on a card setting or in other ways. Let me know below in the comments. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week.